you can't keep up with marketers who are using advanced automations and artificial intelligence to run their businesses. If you don't start automating the majority of your business, you won't have a business in a few short years. Welcome to another episode of the Big Picture Business Podcast. We are so happy that you are here with us today. Hi, Rory. Hello. How are you doing? Wonderful. Just wonderful. <laughs> Just peachy. Yes. And you know what? You know what really helps my day and my business even that much better? Intelligent automation. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Intelligent automation. Why is it important? What is it? How to use it? And so much more. Are you excited? <laughs> Beyond excited. Because we use automation in our, in our businesses every day. But the world is just getting yeah. more and more automated. And if you mm -hmm. are running an online business, a digital business in any way, in any form, the automations that you use will make or break you. 100%. So along with that, the whole goal of anything that we do with automation, I know in my business, I'm sure for yours, Rory, yeah. we're saving time and money, we're saving time and money. And that's what everyone wants to do in this life. Okay. We may have our differences difference of opinion, political views. I don't care. But the two things we all want is to save time and yep. money. So how do we do that, Rory? Oh, it's all on me, huh? <laughs> of course. <laughs> all right. Well, let's talk about what intelligent automation is and what it is not. Okay. So there's a lot of automation out there. We've seen it in the world of, let's say, manufacturing, right? Robotic automations where they have a robot that are, is doing things right? Like, yeah, Tesla is a perfect example, right? They program a robot to do a repetitive task over and over and over again, but it's not learning anything. Mm -hmm. And intelligent automation is where you're actually using artificial intelligence to give it a set of tasks, and then it learns how to improve it and do it better over time. Exactly. So what does that look like in the digital world, Dominica? Oh, well, it's something that my team with Sweetie Marketing, my, my marketing agency, we really excel at. And no, this is not a plug for my marketing team, but I love them. And so I just have to say they do this so, so well because they can look at the bigger picture of someone's website and then say, hmm, how many hours are you really taking out of your precious time to do this thing or that thing? And then we have the business owner basically keep track of, well, okay, I know that fulfilling orders takes 12 hours a week. I know that printing shipping labels takes another three hours a week. And so what we do for the business owner is make sure that everything is as seamless as possible, as streamlined, as automated as possible, where it's saving our client so much time and so much money. Because time is money, right? I mean, if you, if you think about like what your hourly worth is, so to speak, there's a value on that. Rory, you charge a certain rate. I charge a certain rate. You listening to this, you have your own hourly rate and you break that down into like, oh my gosh, I'm printing shipping labels at this hourly rate. You don't need to be doing that. Your time is so much more valuable. So being able to set up certain types of automations to take you out of the equation to help your business continue to grow even larger that's something that I think a lot of business owners struggle with a little bit, especially in the beginning. We think, and I can only speak from my personal experience because I did this with Lovebird Chocolates, as new business owners, fresh eyes, fresh mind, open heart, we think, I have to do it all. I'm going to do it all. When really you don't need to do it all. <laughs> there are so many different types of softwares out there, API integrations. I mean, you name it. If you want something automated, it can happen like today, pretty easy and effectively. What do you think? Yeah. Corey? And, um, you know, I just want to go back to one of the things you were saying there about how the hourly rate that we have for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. I think you have to start thinking in, in the concepts of this idea of that there's certain tasks that are $10 an hour tasks. There's certain tasks that are $100 an hour tasks, certain tasks that are $1,000 an hour tasks, or certain tasks that are $10,000 an hour tasks, et cetera. Right. And mm -hmm. the more you are successful, the more your business is doing well, the more you should, and more you should be doing those higher level thousand, $10,000 type an hour tasks, 
and automating or delegating the starting with the $10 an hour tasks, then moving to the $100 an hour tasks, then moving to the $1,000 an hour tasks if possible, right? So that you are completely focused on what you are great at and where you bring the most value to your business. Because it doesn't serve you to be spending, let's say, with your example of shipping labels, if you spent two hours every day printing shipping labels and attaching them to packages that had to go out, what happens to your business? It doesn't grow at the rate that you want it to grow because you end up spending the time that you should be bringing in new business, doing these, uh, these tasks for your business. And there's lots of people who like love doing like those types of jobs. Like it's not that passing off those saying, oh, this is lower level work. No, it's just other work that needs to get done. And some people really enjoy doing those types of tasks. Being a leader, running your business is about figuring out where people should be in the business structure that you've created and then assigning them to the right position. That includes yourself. And if you're starting like day one in a business, yeah, you're probably going to be doing a lot of that stuff. But very quickly moving out of that is part of growing a business. But then implementing intelligent automation into your business is another aspect of that. This is where you're saying there's software and programs out there that you can utilize in your business to be able to get a result very quickly. You don't have to pay someone else to do it and it can be done near instantaneously. So you put people in the right positions, you choose the touch points for your business and then you automate the rest. Okay. So we'll dive into that because we're going to talk about how you can automate 80% of your business and still have a very high level touch in your business. <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly. And I talk about this a lot in my business. And I'm sure those of you who are longtime listeners of the podcast, I always say it's important to work in the business. Yes, but you have to work on the business as well. So you have to identify where your time is most valuable, working in or working on. And part of working on the business is figuring out these automations, putting systems in place. And by automation, of course, our minds go to the technological aspect of it, the techie side. But what Rory just said it was so clear, you can, for yourself, mentally automate put systems in place with the right people within your network, within your company, right? So you can automate it on a human level as well as the AI level. So let's talk about the AI level a little bit, Roy. What's some so, of your favorite AI software, first of all? I mean, there's, there's quite a few, but I want to talk about, first off, like why it's important to, to actually utilize these automations and these AI in your business. And the number one reason is that because most likely your competitors are as well. And if you're not keeping up with the speed of business, they're going to win. So think about it like this. If someone develops a script to be able to upload, let's say a thousand YouTube videos without actually having to create the videos. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason I'm saying this is because there's a script that exists like this. <laughs> they can upload a thousand YouTube videos based on certain keywords. They can test it out, put up a bunch of different videos very, very quickly. Let's say in like 10 minutes, they could have a thousand up and they're able to instantaneously tell which one of those videos is going to do well. What leverage and what benefit does that give them? They can out test you a thousand to one, maybe 10,000 to one mm -hmm. to see what is going to rank. And then they can create the content that they already know is going to rank. and then they can put out quality videos, know it's actually ranking and get the results where if you're not utilizing that type of automation or scripts or whatever it is in your business, then what ends up happening? Well, you create a video. You don't know if it's going to rank. You spend all this time on it and you might hit one out of 10 that ranks when they could test out in probably the same time, a hundred thousand videos and get 10, maybe a hundred solid rankings. And there's no guesswork because they already know it works. Which is crazy, but also very cool to be able to quickly utilize these tools so that you're not wasting ample amounts of time trying to figure out what's going to hit, what's going to work. Things that used to be specialized services, such as copywriting, are no longer specialized services. 
they're becoming a commodity. And the reason they're becoming a commodity and the reason why people who are, quote, copywriters, you know, they're not getting twenty or $50,000 for a sales video or sales letter these days because artificial intelligence can do it just as well. Just as well. Shout out to Jarvis AI. <laughs> so if you haven't heard of Jarvis AI, and they're not the only ones, there's like copy.ai. There's a few others that are, are up and coming as well that work really well at writing sales copy, but not only sales copy. So if we look at Jarvis, for example, they do sales copy, different types of sales copy using different formulas. They can write your ads for you, Google ads, Facebook ads, YouTube, like whatever it is, they're writing their ads for you, LinkedIn, Twitter, right? It just goes on and on. They know all the different styles and what grabs attention on those platforms. They are writing blog posts for people. They're writing books for people. It just gets crazy. Now, does it mean that it can work without any human input? No. Does it need another set of eyes on it? Yeah. You need to make a few edits sometimes. But in general, it gives you something that's really solid. It's like, imagine like someone comes to you with the first draft of your book and you didn't even have to write it. You just had to give them like a two minute spiel about it. And then you're, they were like a minute later, here's your book, rough draft, make a few edits. I mean, life-changing. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so these automations, they can really be a benefit. Now, there's a whole other side of it, which you're probably thinking, like, is it losing some of personal aspect? Is it losing some of the creativity that we have? Is it killing jobs? I know that's a really yeah. big question. And the answer to all of it is yes, in some ways. And in some ways, no. Let's look at those individually. Let's look at creativity. Okay. Okay. Now, you still have to give it an input. Okay. That purely comes from you. There's also certain things that it's just not going to be able to comprehend or write on. Okay. If you've developed your own system or process, which is some of the th things that I teach in my business is developing your own system and process of how you, the way you do things, it's not going to be able to know that or to replicate it, but it can enhance it. It can clarify it. Okay. So you put the, uh, this is what step one is. This is how we do it type of idea. And then it expands on that idea and helps you come up with the languaging around it. So when you look at it from, it's a creative enhancer rather than a creative destroyer, then you go in with the right attitude. Also think about, there are a lot of people get writer's block. What is writer's block? It's just a lot of times it's a mental aspect where we're like, I just can't think of anything to write about the specific topic. So you can utilize something like Jarvis to enter like, um, this is the idea of what I want to say. I just don't know what to say. And it'll give you something that you either like or don't like. But a lot of times I found that when I get something I don't like, it gives me ideas for what I do like, <laughs> right? We did this in, in with music, right? Where we're like, yeah. oh, I don't like that idea. However. However, let's try this idea. I always say that it's, it's great to know what you don't want. At least you know that. You might not know exactly what you want, but you definitely know what you don't want. So yeah, I can spit out some things you're like, nope. <laughs> and then it can help inspire things that make more sense that are targeted for you and your business. Yeah. And we talked about creativity, um, jobs. What was the, one of the other ones? I mean, I already kind of covered that when I was saying that copywriters are kind of be getting pushed out of the market in some ways. Doesn't mean that they're completely. No, it just means that you've got to be really good is pushing out the crappy copywriters because a great copywriter can weave stories and can understand things in a way that artificial intelligence can't at this point in time. But an average copywriter who doesn't understand even sometimes the structure of writing sales copy, they're going to get pushed out of the market because someone can just go and get the AI version and it'll be better and it'll convert better. Yep. Isn't that crazy? It's helpful for people like us, but also people who have spent their entire careers as copywriters, that has to be quite frustrating because it's so much more cost-effective to go and get the AI version of what you need. And so on a personal level, as much as I do love to support small business owners who have built this software. I'm also looking at people like humanitarian level. Like I understand people need jobs, but it's, it's good to use AI in combination with people who've been doing it for years. So I wouldn't just trust that the system knows I would absolutely go in and edit 
if you're excited about this idea and you go to Jarvis.ai, we really should be a sponsor for them. I swear at this point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you go there and you get yourself a free beginner subscription, starts at 25 bucks a month and start playing with it, it's highly unlikely it's going to give you exactly what is going to be perfect. You're going to have to you know, put your marketing hat on and think about different keywords for your audience that make more sense or sentence structure or whatever it looks like. But it's, I would say 90% there in terms of being good and being able to deliver a result that you're looking for, but you're still, there's some human component to it. Yeah. And when you're inputting that information, like you have, you're the one who's giving it context. That context is everything. If it doesn't have that in the beginning, it can only give you back what you put into it to a certain degree. Right. If your your topic and your idea is so off base and isn't going to resonate with your audience, it doesn't matter how good the copy is. Mm-hmm. So this is where higher level of intelligence in your business becomes a factor. This is where you separate yourselves from everyone else. Agreed. So let's get a little bit more technical for all you techies out there. Shout out to my geeks. I think it's so important to understand how software and AI can play such a pivotal piece a vital piece in business growth. And one of the ways, one of the many ways that Rory and I have built our success is by utilizing different types of software. Specifically, the first one that comes to mind is ActiveCampaign. ActiveCampaign allows us to automate emails. And it's been a game changer for my business because I'm getting however many signups a day on the various different funnels I have going on. And I don't have to sit there and email these people one at a time and take it a step further. It's intelligent. It's got so many different things that I'm barely scratching the surface. Rory knows so much more. (laughs) Okay. Well, let's just think about it. Like just at a foundational level with email. Okay. So email, we have so many things that can happen with email. Okay. So someone opens an email, doesn't take an action. Like say they don't click the link that you want them to to click. Well, you can automate what happens if they don't click the link within a specific amount of time. You can, if they do click the link, but they don't purchase what you have on the page, you can then automate another set of emails to go to them. But what's great about Active Campaign is that they have so many different integrations and so many things that they do. You can also combine text messaging into that. So let's give you an example of a, an application funnel. Okay. So someone comes to your website, they sign up, they get something for free, let's say a free PDF of of some sort. Okay. And then your next step is you want to get them onto a consultation call of some sort. So let's just think that through. So they sign up on the email, then you follow up with another email, which is automated, say Mm -hmm. a few days later that, you know, says, Hey, you know, I'd love to chat with you, learn more about your business, what you're going on, how can I help you? Whatever. Like, Hopefully it's better marketing copy than that, but sometimes that does work. So then they don't take you up on it. Mm -hmm. So then another email goes up following out. (laughs) They don't take you up on that the third time. Well, maybe you change what happens. Maybe you send them a text message. This all can be automated, right? That text message gets a response. They click a link, they go to the page, but they don't fill out the application. Well, then you follow up again, Mm -hmm. but you, you know where they are in the process. You follow up with another text message. Now, what if all at the same time they started seeing your ads and their ads that they saw match the actions they had taken? What if? Now, let's say they opened that text message and didn't didn't fill out the application, but then a day later they saw an ad that said, "Hey, I saw you wanted to uh, find out more about our services. Maybe you got distracted. Maybe you couldn't fill it out. Didn't have the time. Go check it out again. Maybe not that creepy, but yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm watching you." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that's how it works, right? Is like you everyone is being tracked all the time and all of these automations happen and you don't have to do anything, but you do have to set them up and you have to be aware of them that they're even a possibility, okay? Because things like Active Campaign, they can integrate with so many different platforms. They can integrate uh, with your advertising. They can integrate with a thousand different softwares out there. And I'll give you an example. If you're using, say, Trello, which is kind of like a, a visual project management tool. Okay. So one of the things you can do in Trello mm-hmm. is create automation so that when you drag something from one place to another, an automation starts. Now, this is a perfect example of how to use an automation. Let's say your project, like you're running an agency 
okay? Like, like we do. And your project for your client is complete. Okay, you can set up an automation where all you have to do is just, dr- all you do is drag it to the complete section. So you have a little card, you just drag it over to complete. Automation runs and it sends an email out to the customer to ask them for a review of your service now that everything's complete. And you can have a follow-up email a month later if they didn't give you a review. That follow-up aspect for my business has been so valuable because we get busy and we forget. And so just knowing, oh, it's going to get done. I don't have to think about it. Yeah, that's important. Well, yeah. And when you're starting your business, you know, following up with three or four people, you know, leads that are coming in every week, not a big deal. Yeah. But yeah. when you have hundreds of leads coming in, you just can't keep up with it. Nor will you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no. Get to this point where you're like, okay, so grateful. It's the best problem to have ever. But thank God for AI to a degree so that it can do its job and do it effectively. There are leads that come in for every business that aren't qualified leads, meaning they're not your ideal customer. So Mm -hmm. when Rory was mentioning the application funnel side of things, having that automated so that you don't have to get on calls with every single person that wants to work with you or that is a potential lead, that's huge. I've been able to streamline that with Video Ask, another great uh, piece of software that has been very helpful in doing online applications to see if I'm the right fit for someone for their needs. And I can sort of weed that out really, really quickly by, by setting up these automations. Yeah. Now let's talk about, cause I, you know, earlier I said automating 80% of your business, what happens with the other 20%? Okay. So you should be, if you, if you really are wanting it to work properly, you should be hyper-focused on communicating, over-communicating, like intense communication. And what do I mean by that? It does not mean like we were talking about the, I'm stalking you type of thing. <laughs> not that type of like not overbearing. Intense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Overbearing what I mean that. is is that the communication has to be like so personal. Over personal, I guess, is the way to best put it. Right. Ooh, um, yeah. Over personal. Okay. Yeah. So and video ask is a perfect example of this. And there's other services that kind of do the same thing. There's Bonjoro and stuff like that. But they're basically these ways of sending personalized videos to people. Instead of letting everything be automated and being disconnected and not creating a connection. We want to automate the things that where it doesn't matter as much. We're just trying to get to the point of having that over-personalized experience. We're bringing people into our world. And then it's all about how personalized can we make that? Right. And, And with Video Ask and Bonjoro, you can really, I mean, someone signs up for your application. You don't just let them go on your schedule and then you show up and have the call, you shoot a a quick 30 second video before the call and say, Hey, Bob, thanks so much for signing up for a call with me. You know, I can't wait to talk with you. I'm looking forward to learning more about you. Do you have any questions before we jump on? Is there something I could help you with? Something like that, right? Like you just make it like really personal, like you really care because you do care, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the over-personalization aspect. Instead of it just being like a templated email, Bob, see you at three, Rory, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> it's like, no, I'm like taking the time to actually make you a video, a personalized video. And it's not just a blanket video for every person who signs up. It's No, it's specific. And think about how much time you would be drafting an email back to that person. It takes less time. Quick, shoot the video on your phone, send it off. It's done. Well, on your phone, on your computer, mm-hmm. like you, they'll tap into your webcam. So it'll just pop up just like, you know, with the podcast here using a webcam is just like this. Be like, yeah. hey, hey, Bob, how's it going? Um, you can't wait for a call. You know, it's at 3 p.m. on on Friday. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you. I, you know, I saw your website. You look looks great. I'm looking forward to helping you. I'll talk with you then, right? See ya. Like, very simple. Very simple. But make sure that as you're setting up the written uh, application or however you bring people into your funnels to do consultation, whatever, whatever that looks like, make sure that you're asking the questions that you can easily respond to quickly. So, and have like a personal touch point, you know, so make sure to ask for their website in advance, make sure to ask for some of their social media. So you can say, Hey, 
you know, really looking forward to meeting you. I saw that recent post that you made on Instagram about blah, 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 blah. Can't wait to learn more about you. Something personal like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause we're, we're talking about hyper-personalized. So not only are we personalizing the video to them, but mm -hmm. you're mentioning something that is personal to them. Right. And if you guys want to actually test this out and see what it looks like, go to bpbpodcast.com. You will see my face in the bottom right-hand corner and you can look at what that looks like on Video Ask. And you can also record a video of yourself and say hi to me and I'll respond back to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about API integrations. My favorite. Okay. But bef before we do that, actually, I want to I hear about how you're utilizing these automations for some of your clients. Yeah. Right now, because we were, we were discussing this before we hopped on about how you're doing this for, for one of your clients mm -hmm. at an intense level, how it's saving them like 40 hours a week. Yep. Yeah. What does that look like? What are you doing to make that happen? Great question. Yeah. So this is probably one of the biggest successes that my company has had in terms of saving a, a small business time and money. And by small business, I mean, they're a family run business, but they do a lot of business. It's a, it's a very big operation that they run. Um, but they have uh, weekly shipments that have to happen because they sell livestock. And so what that means is it's vital, not only to their company, but also to the livestock to keep alive. Everything has to keep flowing very, very, very smoothly. And it was, I mean, I'm not zero exaggeration here. It was taking my client upwards of 40 hours a week in figuring out how to piece all these different orders together. Because, you know, when you go to their website, you can order four of this and two of those and the different color variations and the different attributes involved with that. And it's, the site is just huge. And it was, becoming a little confusing, not only for the user, the front end user, the person ordering, but also for my client. I'm like, where is everything? It's like, that's great. We've got the money, but now what? So we are implementing two separate calendar automations, which is amazing where they're going to ship it out or people can come to their location and pick up. We're also um, automating different inventory systems so that the customer on the front end can see what is truly available week to week, as well as what's available on the back end for the client. And then a proper reporting system so that my client doesn't have to actually dig through the website. Now we have it set on an auto every Monday. It just emails. Here's the orders. Here's all the orders in very clear columns. Here's what needs to be accomplished this week. And then we also have another section where it will say, here's what's coming up next week. So you can glance at it and plan for it. And that will save my client. I mean, think about that. That's a, that's a full-time job for somebody, you know, where that just, that's eliminated now. When I say eliminated, it's a good thing because it was my client, the one doing all that work when they, they need to, their skill set needs to be working on the business and not in the business. So now that we have, we're working toward eliminating those factors for the client that's everything to them, everything. And it's, it's taken a very long time to get to this point where we found the right person on my team that was able to test everything and get it done. I mean, we're talking months of like testing this system. So there are some complex systems where it will take a while to, and maybe you'll need someone who has a specialty in doing these things. You can, you know, look at my, my agency or Rory's. I mean, we, we do offer these more complex systems, but you can also hire someone on Upwork or you can, you know, solicit all different kinds of individuals for the kinds of software that you need built. But the point of this though, is just, again, going back to saving time and money, being able to take yourself out of the equation so you can get back to business growth. And I think it's such a common, common misconception. If you're sitting there and you're packaging up orders, you're thinking, this is business growth. I'm growing my business. Yay. Not exactly. You're fulfilling the orders, which is great. And I personally really like that repetitive work. I like repetitive things, which is why I made like a million truffles by hand. And I've got the carpal tunnel to show for it. Right. Like, <laughs> and I can't I, stand the repetitive stuff. <laughs> okay. So you see everyone, everyone's different. So I know for me, I can get stuck in that repetitive, like, okay, now I need to take myself out of this. And I did that for almost 10 years with Sweet Tea Marketing. And I took myself out of that role where I was doing everything and hired more people. My business has grown exponentially because I was able to recognize that I don't need to be the only person that can do this. Let go of the reins a little bit. So you have to be okay with that factor first 
whether you're hiring somebody else or you're implementing automations, it's all good things. It's all good things. And what I love about API integrations, API integration, API stands for application programming interface. So think about all the different apps that you like to use on your phone. How does it benefit your business? One of the applications that my team comes across almost daily with our clients, because we do a lot of big e-commerce based sites is stamps.com. People are shipping through stamps.com. And so I know I keep using it as an example, but it's a good one. With stamps.com, you can go to stamps.com itself, right? Type out the domain and you can print out labels and you can hand cut and paste everything and then print it out and cut the labels and put the tape on the pack. Okay, you get where I'm going with this, right? <sighs> Rather than doing that and taking seemingly forever and it turning into a mundane, horrible task, you can now use an application programming interface, an API, which connects the site to the site. So it connects my client's website to stamps.com with a click of a button. So now all my client has to do is just say, print all the orders. They can select the, the dates they want those orders to be printed off for and do yourself a favor and get the sticky labels don't cut it out and don't do the just no sticky labels all the way. You slap them on there, you call it a day and it's done. So if you are a small business owner or even big business owner, if, you, if you're doing, I would say at least a hundred orders a week. Okay. Anything more than that, you might need to go bigger, but there's a fantastic company called Rolo printer. And the product is so cool. It's a stamp that just stamps out all these orders and it spits it out super, super fast on all your labels. So you're not having to sit there staring at the printer as it's just like er, 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 all the time. <laughs> you're actually, it's just printing within a second. It's, it's going, it's stamping everything on there. And they're really, they're not very expensive at all. For like 160 bucks, you can get one of these printers and you can integrate it with stamps.com. How many hours did I spend watching my printer and begging that there would be enough ink in there so that I wouldn't have to repurchase my stamps.com package. I mean, it was, oh, if I had something like this, if I had the tools that are available now for Lovebird Chocolates 11, 12 years ago, oh my gosh. What's the same like with our music, <laughs> music? careers? Yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> right? We were just so ahead, ahead of our time. And now that it's available, it's like, eh, come on to something else. Now I'm helping everyone else do it, you know, yeah. <laughs> but the Rolo printer is very cool. I highly recommend that you check that out anyways. So that's just one of my clients that we are helping and will continue to help fine tune and keep making those tweaks, keep making those decisions and steps in the right direction on how we can automate. And that's part of the big picture strategy that I love so, so much. I just, I love it when people can turn around and say, oh my gosh, I'm saving X amount of hours every single week. What do I do? What do I do with this time? And that's... Well, yeah, because everyone is so involved in the day-to-day -day of their business. Everyone who starts a small business, for the most part, creates a job for themselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the bigger picture is about, well, stepping back and saying, let's turn this job that I've created into an empire. That's right. Digital marketing empires. That's what we're building. That's what we've built. Yep. That's, what, that's what we've built. I am fiery passionate about helping others do the same. <laughs> yeah, because you get to provide a lifestyle for a lot of other people too. And that's the best. Yeah. <laughs> I got a text message just last week from my very, very longtime client. They are phenomenal, a landscape company. And they sent me a picture of a new Sprinter van. And they said, because of you, because of all the work that you have done for us and website optimization and putting us on the map, we have so many jobs now that we purchased a brand new Sprinter van for our workers to be able to go into all these different locations. So thank you. When I see things like that, I'm like, yay. <laughs> That's why we do what we do, you know? Yeah. I have a client too, where just this uh, summer, they soft launch opened a massive showroom building for their business. They'd been in business for 20 years, never had a showroom because of the leads that we are generating for their business and new business. And we've 10X their business since starting working with them. Yay. They were able to purchase a whole set of buildings, like three different addresses. Awesome. <laughs> right. That's amazing. Yeah. And um and have this massive showroom for for their business, you know, wouldn't have been possible without digital marketing, essentially, and what we've been doing with them. It's phenomenal. And you want those types of wins because everyone benefits end of the day. Right. Truly. The customer benefits, 
the client benefits, right? Because their customers benefit because they get to go in and see everything like up in their showroom and make mm-hmm. proper decisions, right? Mm-hmm. And then they benefit because they get to actually have that experience for their customers. Right. And then we benefit because we're helping them create those leads, which grows their business, which in turn grows our business. And a lot of that all comes right back around to setting up intelligent automation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We really hope that you guys have just learned a ton because we love talking about this stuff. I'm going to give you some homework. Okay. Oh, okay. So homework is figure out one thing this week that you could automate that you haven't been, that you know that needs to get done and then go and automate it and figure out how to automate it, whatever it takes, hire someone if you have to, but get it automated and get it off of your plate and let us know in the comments or send us uh, an email or whatever however you want to reach out and let us know and let us know how it goes and what it's done for you. Thank you so much for being here with us. You guys, that is it for this episode. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.